Hello. In this video, I want to show you some of the uh, modifications that I've been planning to do on this guy for a little while. I have no idea if they'll actually be good modifications or not. This is kind of an experiment. And I also want to show you the um, painting, like these uh, blue pieces here and these pieces under here on Optimus Prime's chest. Uh, Piag was the one who uh, first was talking about doing that. And he mentioned doing it with a red sharpie pen. So, first thing I want to do is I want to improve his arm articulation. I talked about this in the review that I did for him. How there's a little, little tiny tab, or um, a bump right there that keeps his arm from going further than this. So, it's very, very tiny, but it's enough to stop it. I'm going to just barely cut this out. And if there are any problems with uh, having done this mod, well, I'll, I'll let you know. I don't think there will be any problems, because there's not really an obvious reason for the, the little tab to be there that's keeping the arm from bending. Yeah, see that? Well, no, I didn't quite cut out enough for it to not spring back, but I'm getting there. And let's see, that should be quite a bit. Do it further down here now. Let's see, that looks fairly rounded. Let's try bending that arm. And, well, that improves it a little bit. Let's see. Looks like there's still a little bit of a bump right there that I'm missing. Looks like I was carving just a little bit too low. Because it's such a small bump and it's this very light translucent plastic. It's hard quite to see what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm making very good guesses, but I'm missing just a little bit. And that looks like it should do it. Yes, see, that improves his arm articulation a fair amount, and I honestly don't see any downsides to doing this. It's not like I'm feeling any pressure, and yeah, looks pretty nice. So there's a little bit of stuff still in there. There. So, I'll do that to the other arm later off screen. Next thing I want to do is, I also talked about this in the review that I did, but you see this part of the uh, foot collar here? This makes it so that you can't really bend his foot. Well, you can. Um, well, it gets in the way of moving his foot inwards like this a little bit. And it really gets in the way of turning his foot side to side. So it does limit his uh, foot articulation. And because his foot does not have a flat instep, it does prevent him from being able to stand flat-footed as much as he should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, down to, I guess, from this point even across. It'll take a little while because it's a fair amount of plastic I want to remove, but it should greatly enhance his foot articulation. It might damage the aesthetic of the foot a little bit, but I think the rewards will be worth it. Let's see. I'm actually getting pretty close. And, well, I could probably stop there. A little bit more, though. OCD. 
This blue plastic is pretty soft, actually. And, yeah, I'll pro I think I'll stop there. <coughs> I cut it down a fair amount. No stress marks, so that should help quite a bit. Yeah, see, now it's not getting in the way of him turning his foot left and right. Um, it still gets away a little bit. I actually think I might cut off this little bit of it right back here. So, let's do that now. This is such a tiny piece and it can wiggle a little bit. It's kind of hard to get a good angle on it. It's not exactly the most comfortable piece to you piece to cut. I talk, but I don't really have much to talk about. Um, I don't exactly want you to skip through this video, but I don't really know what to say to get you to not. Because if there's any insight I have on what I'm doing, like on what I'll do next, or I don't know, anything, then I prefer that you actually hear it than not. But I also don't want to fill the video with a lot of white noise talking. So, I'm actually not quite sure how to do this. I suppose... Well, I suppose it's just like any other V-Build or anything like that. You're there for the to watch the process, not necessarily the other person talk, so... Maybe I should just start a channel specific thing called let's mod like let's play or let's build actually I think I might call this let's mod I might even change the tiles for some of my other videos like that Soundwave one and the bumblebee I did although the bumblebee one was more about showing just what I did and how I got to it and I've actually enjoyed a fair amount of attention for doing that too uh, like Vault Matrix and Optibotomous uh, all referenced to me um, specifically by name. Yeah, that helps a lot. I mean, I suppose I could um, cut out a little bit more of that, but I don't want it to, that color to not be there. I think that is good enough for now. And that gets out of the way. It still looks pretty good. And, yeah, that, that yeah. Let me uh, get him standing. Yeah, look at that. That is really helping his foot articulation. Like his other foot can has the joints to do that. And you could do that if you spend a lot of time getting him posed that way. But that was so easy to do. I definitely recommend doing that uh, ankle modification. The arm modification, um, that's up to you. Well, I guess it's all up to you. But I definitely recommend that ankle modification. I think that is essential to this figure. So I'm going to... Turn this off and uh, do the uh, mods on the other side. And when I come back, I'll start uh, using the uh, red sharpie like Piog suggested people do. So I've completed the mods to the um, left side of the figure. And his posability and stability have been greatly increased. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the blue parts with the red sharpie. And the parts under his oh, chest windows here. So, first thing I'm going to do, now this is something I saw someone doing earlier, how to get his sword to look like it does in the show, just lift his hand up and put it in underneath. I think that's pretty clever. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the painting under his chest, because I think that is more important. So I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the chest up and away. Fold uh, this out of the way, fold these back, and I now have access to everything I want to paint. Now, I, I don't want to paint this right here. I think this looks pretty good gray because it almost looks like um, engine detail. I want to paint this bit right here, so 
what is visible along here up over to here. This is actually going to be my, well, my second time really painting painting anything because I also painted the little orphan android figure, but hmm, I'm not very experienced with the painting, I guess is what I'm trying to say, so I don't even know if you would call this painting, I'm just coloring. I'm going to try to avoid anything else, although you could make an argument for painting that red as well. I think I can tell that this is going to need multiple coats. So, drawing over this. I suppose if it bleeds a little bit, it won't matter because some of these um, details, like this in here, can get overshadowed quite a bit by other parts of the figure. I mean, literal shadows. It is a little bit hard to see in doing this on camera. I may end up turning this off and then coming back to uh, show you what I have actually done. And I believe actually with this marker you would be able to wash it off if you did it fast enough. Because I think this actually would take a fair amount of time to, I don't know what the correct term would be, but I guess cure onto the plastic. Like, I think it would actually rub off fairly easily. I remember, actually, I remember a long, long time ago, back when uh, Classics was still sort of a new thing, I had a um, Classics Astro Train, <coughs> and some of the black paint on it had been um, misapplied. So there was a big white section on his wing, where it should have been black. So I took a black Sharpie to that, and that lasted for a long time, but after a while it would eventually wipe off, and I think I remember reading a tutorial a long, long time ago talking about how to paint using Sharpies, and it said the most important thing is to just leave it alone for about a week or so. Now, I don't know that I'll actually have the patience for that, but if that ones up being the case, I will, I might make a video talking about my experience using this Sharpie here. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. It. I'm sort of in a virgin territory for me right now. I've, well, Piog's reviews are any indication. This should drastically improve the look of the figure. Actually, I think I may have not been on camera, but not been showing this as the focus, so... I'm just going over with um, multiple layers. Maybe I, I'm i wasting my time by doing this here, but by not just going on to the other side now, but well, I think it's actually becoming a more deep red. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'll move on to the other side. I think I need to move the camera quite a bit lower. This is a pretty fun, easy to control way of doing this. I mean, painting's fun and all, but it doesn't always go on flat, kind of. I mean, I had a lot of trouble with that little orphan android's face. I mean, if I were better at painting, I would know what to do, and I think I actually could do a lot better now, just because I've thought about what I was actually doing quite a bit. Now, there, there are a lot of just little tiny skills you pick up when you're a avid Transformers fan like I am. I am curious about if this is going to cause any rub off like on the arms or anything. I mean, I, I'm sure if I didn't wait long enough before transforming this thing from one mode to the other, it would rub off to certain other parts of the uh, figure. like. If I rotate this one over, I think it would rub off some paint over here. Or not paint, the, uh, some ink. I'm pretty sure it would do that. Now, whether or not that's a bad thing, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't call that a good thing. I don't think it would actually matter that much. I 
I think when I was doing my Little Orphan Android prototype, when I was uh, washing that, painting that, dyeing that, all that stuff, I know I did a video where I uh, dyed it, where I showed how that was done. And I did a video where I showed the um, construction. And I think I... I'm pretty sure I did, I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure I did not do a video where I showed actually painting the figure. Because something happened weird with my camera where I think I forgot to press play for part of it. Like I was painting one piece, then going to the, um, painting one piece, and then showing it off, stopping, resting for a little bit, and going to the next piece. And I think I forgot for like five of the pieces to record. So I actually ended up not uploading that video. Because I didn't have all the content I needed. It would have been a real fractured video. And there wasn't, I only had one prototype I could have painted. So it was a uh, do it right or you've lost it sort of thing. And for my first time painting it and not really having a way to save myself once if I made a big mistake. I think I did a pretty good job on that. I'm probably going to stop this in a minute. I can't see myself doing much more but increasing my chance of putting this ink where it does not belong. I think this red, um, it doesn't match perfectly with the um, it's more of a dark, deep red, so it doesn't match perfectly with this right here. But I think it'll look pretty decent. So... I'm going to... I've uh, inked these. I'm going to turn this off for now, let it dry for a little bit, so I don't end up getting red ink all over the figure as I handle it. And then I'll come back and I'll start... Um, scribbling on these translucent blue parts. So here I have, I've painted the uh, the parts under the um, uh, windshield chest pieces and one thing I was saying is I didn't want to paint these round bits in there but when I tested it out to see how well it looked I transformed it all the way to robot mode it wasn't quite red enough under his chest and even now it's not quite as red as I would like I'd, I almost think that these parts right here need to be painted but they're so close to the windshields that I don't really want to do it so the next thing for me to do is to scribble all over the uh, blue translucent pieces so I'm not quite sure how I want to handle this right now I'm thinking I'll make it cut off right there because I don't want to bother trying to color in this blue hinge piece here, here so I'm thinking I'll make a cut off like right there and probably do the same around the hand joint I no, I could probably paint or um, color that in pretty easily but I'm not sure so I'm going to just sort of work in all of this area in here and then sort of as I go along with it figure out what I want to do over in those areas so and this is going to be a lot more surface area than the under the chest bits, which, yeah, I'm touching them, but they're not bleeding onto me, so I'm good. I'm kind of interested to see how well this, uh, it's a very smooth plastic, how well this uh, smooth blue translucent plastic is going to work, how well it's going to hold on this red. It in doing this, it's uh, still staying translucent. I mean, I knew it would, but it's actually sort of a neat effect. Let's angle this down a bit. I, mean, I, I I'm interested to see what Optimus Prime's gun, um, mech tech gun-like thing would look like with this treatment done to it, and see how well that changes the how the LED shines through. That might be interesting to see. Let's see, let's get a light closer down to here so that we can... No, no, don't you fall. Let's get a light closer down to here so we can see better what's going on. Yeah, this is kind of neat how this is working. Yeah, I'm just going to 
draw a line right here and I guess I'm a little bit concerned about if I draw this red sharpie onto the uh, actually red plastic but I'm not overly concerned about it because I mean it's already red it will it's only going to be a small change because uh, on this these bits right here these are used to plug the arms together in vehicle mode and I think those might actually need a fair amount of touch up over time and one thing I'm noticing with this is that I can't get into all the nooks and crannies very well like there are lots of places on this which is or this right here which is sort of ridged and I can't really get into so I'll probably need to go in with a sharpie pen and change that so I realize that lighting's not really good for this and I'm making a sort of crowded I, I realize you can't really see much about what's going on here I'm just sort of showing off what I'm doing and I think that does look pretty nice I think that really improves the look of that arm so I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and when I'm done with this I'll show you the end result see you then so here I have I have painted or um, I have inked Optimus Prime's forearms and the uh, under chest bits and I kind of think that the um, blue on the forearms maybe looked a little bit better, but I think he looks really good like this. Um, uh, maybe it's just um, that difference in the red tones uh, makes it a little bit odd, but it, it, this doesn't look quite as good as I had hoped on the forearms, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, certainly, if you think this looks good, I do recommend doing this, although I was sort of struck by what I should have done while I was finishing it up, but what I should have done is I, there's a screw hole here and here, and what I should have done is I should have unscrewed the this part from the arm. Now I wouldn't have popped this pin out because popping pins out, at least with my experience level of doing it, actually tends to make the to harm the figure, so I'm not good enough at doing that to want to risk doing that, although that would have made it a lot easier just to take the entire clear bit out and color it, but just taking this um, part right here off of the clear bit would have made it a lot easier. But here's what it looks like, and it's not bad. Now, one thing I went ahead and did, because I was curious about it, is I colored his gun to be blue, or uh, his uh, blue gun to be red. And if you pull it back and you do it, the uh, red actually shines through a lot better now than when it was uh, blue. I mean, it looks a bit too evil for it to be Optimus Prime's gun, but it is surprising how much just changing the color of the outside makes that look better. And the Powerizer gimmick for the Powerizers, essentially the reason why they have the translucent plastic at all is so that you can... See, I have the gun plugged into his arm here, and the light shines as the gun deploys the light shines through his arm like this it's supposed to be almost like the entire figure sort of lights up although it's not very well executed um it's supposed to be kind of like there's light piping throughout the entire figure the um what is it the reveal the shield g2 optimus prime actually had something sort of similar to that that worked very well where it was genuine light piping that was in his arms and i thought that was very well done and Well, I think that's a neat idea. I just don't know how well you could actually do something like that on Optimus, on this design of Optimus Prime, because outside of uh, these, which actually show gl uh, uh, glow very brightly in normal light, his uh, chest plates, outside of those and then eyes, I don't know how you could do the light piping all throughout the body. Now, um, Power Eyes or Megatron it makes sense because. Well, purple is a very suiting color to be all over Megatron, and it sort of looks like the dark energy on that flowed through him throughout, well, a, a significant part of Season 1. But yeah, this this is my video where I modify the uh, Powerizer Optimus Prime figure. What I've done is I have uh, carved away at this ankle piece, which allows his feet to have more mobility. I have given him a larger range in the elbow and I've painted these parts red and these parts red.
and thank you for watching.